<laughs> Hi, Flastube. This is Tina Frazier coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. Today is Saturday, July 7th at approximately 6.15 p.m. Eastern Time. I am coming to you from my house. Um, my husband and I decided this weekend that we needed a break and we decided to stay home this weekend. Um, it's been like five weekends or so since we've actually had a chance to just kind of stay home and relax. <coughs> Excuse me, and get some of the projects done that we needed to get done around the house. Um, no real update on uh, my father-in-law. Um, he is still alive, but his um, you know, he's been fighting off a fever. Um, he broke his fever earlier today, and, um, you know, his breathing's a little more labored. He's starting to, I think he's just starting to wear down finally. Um, my sister-in-law, Elizabeth, is down there with him this weekend, so he's got company. And she's just keeping an eye on things, and he's sleeping a lot more. Now, it used to be he was awake five, six hours a day, and we could get him out of bed. He's not really wanting to get out of bed, and he's only awake about an hour or two now. So <coughs> we kind of think that, um, you know, he's finally starting to wear out. And uh, um, we're not sure how much longer he's actually going to be with us, but uh, he's still holding on. My husband and I are going down there this coming weekend again, so I might have another video for you from, like, their front porch, assuming the weather's not icky hot. The weather here in Ohio has been rather hot. Like uh, temperatures have been in the upper 90s with heat indexes or indices in the 105 to 110 range. It's just been really nasty, hot, and humid. Um, yesterday and today, though, it's been really nice. It's only in the low to mid 80s here today, and it's it's actually been really nice. It's a lot different in other places of the country. I know, like my mom out in California. She had posted last night that at about 10 o'clock her time, the temperature outside was about 105 at 10 o'clock at night. It's still really hot. Um, I'm glad I don't, I'm not out west right now, but uh, yeah. So, I don't have very much housekeeping to do here today. I was going to um, kind of add a Q&A session. But I haven't really been I haven't really been getting many questions from people. I don't know if it's because maybe they don't have questions on anything that I have, or maybe I've just you know been pretty good about just dis discussing things or describing things. I'm not really sure what it is, but uh, hopefully, if you guys start having questions, I can go ahead and post them for you. Oh, goodness, I don't know what it is about me and Flosstube, but every time I seem to uh, sit down and record a video, I always tend to yawn, and I'm not sure why. So, sorry about moving the camera a little bit. Um, so, I wanted to talk to you a little bit this week about kind of who I've been watching on Flosstube, and give a couple of sh shout-outs. Um, I haven't been watching a lot of Flosstube or listening to a lot of Flosstube at work because we've had internal audit in auditing our work um, and so we've had management around and it's just it's been kind of stressful at work um, stressful at home too and it's just it hasn't been real conducive for me wanting to get out and watch much floss tube and I haven't really been stitching a lot is except on my heaven and earth design pattern I'll get into that here in a little bit, but <coughs> some of the people that I've been watching fairly recently, um, you all know these people, um, and they're quite popular. Uh, so Stitcherista is one of the ones I've been watching recently. She's been doing a lot of diamond painting videos in the last couple of weeks. Uh, she's been really into this new craft that she's <laughs> she's found. I too do diamond painting. Um, you can see over here next to me, be on my light, is uh, two rolls up against the wall there. Um, those are two diamond painting kits that I have um, waiting to get started. I have a third one here. Um, I have a third one kind of waiting that's in progress right now. It's here. You can kind of see. I've got some of the diamonds on it. 
Um, this one is a little Japanese Kokeshi girl. You can kind of see that. I've actually got a lot done on her. You can see some of the diamonds are stuck to it. I keep it in here though to kind of keep it out of the way in this uh, tube that I have. I'm not going to get into di the diamond painting part, but um, I just wanted to show you that I'm actually, I actually do diamond painting as well. Um, I have been asked to do a diamond paint with me video, which will come at some point once um, my life kind of settles down and I get through the next couple of months. Um, so I will do a diamond paint with me video and show you kind of my storage system and what I use. I use the same kind of storage for the diamond paint drills that I do for <coughs> my Mill Hill beads and um, everything like that. So um, I can get into that a little bit later. Anyway, Stitcherista has been doing some diamond painting videos. Um, she's <laughs> gotten like 30 kits or something in the last couple of weeks and it, she's just going crazy. So you'll see more videos from her as uh, as time goes by. Um, so watch her if you have if you get a chance if you just kind of want to see what diamond painting is all about. Um, I actually kind of prefer diamond painting um, full drill, which is full coverage um, with square tiles. There's you can get square or round tiles. I actually prefer the square tiles. Um, I have done the round ones are just kind of eh. But uh, anyway, so Stitcherista has been doing diamond painting videos. She also has been stitching some, but she's been diamond painting. Her focus has been on diamond painting. So I've been watching her to some extent, just to kind of get my diamond painting bug back. Um, <coughs> many of you know the Real Housewives of Cross Stitching. I believe that's their full name. Um, they have a baby alert. The, um, the daughter had her baby July 4th, so congratulations. I just wanted to shout them out and say congratulations on the new baby. And hopefully, you know, you're settling into a schedule and everything's going really well for you. Um, it's always exciting. The baby's cute. She's had the baby on a video, um, on their latest video. She has the baby with her. So it's just really cute. So if you get a chance, watch The Real Housewives of Cross Stitching. Um, they're, they're pretty good. They're a lot of fun to talk to listen to. Um, and then, of course, there's Pam and Steph with Just Keep Stitching. Uh, they recently did a StitchCon wrap-up. You know, Stitch. Uh, Steph works for their local needle workshop down in the Cincinnati area and the um, stitching shop that she works at they hosted StitchCon a couple weekends ago so they've been doing um, StitchCon wrap-up videos and stuff and there's apparently a floss tube list that they have that shows the floss tubers that went to StitchCon who have also submitted videos. I have yet to go there and get the StitchCon list of floss tubers that were present so I could watch some of their videos but that's one of the things on my agenda to do is to go there and download the list um, if I think about it actually let me go ahead and write that down I have my pen here um, stitch con floss tube list alright I have my list of things that I need to link okay so they did their uh, just keep stitching. Did their StitchCon wrap up? Um, <coughs> one of the things that I heard mentioned, I don't. It's probably been within the last like two months. Um, a couple of people have mentioned that they actually watch cross stitch videos on Twitch. So I'm gonna call it Twitch Stitch. I don't know if that's the name of it or not, but there's some videos or some streamers out there on. Twitch, which is mostly a gaming video platform, um, that do cross stitch videos, and I had no idea that Twitch Stitch was a thing. So I kind of went out there the last couple of days, and I've been playing around. And the format's a little weird. I think I like floss. I like YouTube better for floss tube and stitch stitching videos, just probably because I'm used to the format, but um, also because I can get. YouTube on Roku, my little Roku that uh, is attached to my big TV. I haven't figured out yet where to get Twitch so I can stream the cross stitching videos from Twitch on my TV. But uh, if any of you are out there and you guys watch stitching videos on Twitch, um, leave me a comment below. Let me know some of the people that you're um, that you're watching 
and I'll kind of check them out. It's going to be something that I kind of do um, on the side. I don't know if I'm going to be active as actively watching the videos as I do on YouTube, but uh, I'm interested in ooh, finding oh excuse me finding more information about um, Twitch Stitch as I'm going to call it because I don't know I don't know what else it's called. Um, so I'd like to know like who you watch and give me a comment let me know if you enjoy it as much as you do as you do floss tube or if you like it better um, I also have an Instagram account and I know that a lot of people use uh, Instagram and post updates and stuff like that I'm not a big Instagram person I'm also you know I do Instagram on occasion and I'll go check it like once every couple of weeks but I usually don't post to Instagram Facebook is pretty much where I post everything um, but if you like Twitch and you watch stitching videos on Twitch, just let me know some of your favorite um, personalities out there, and I'll see what I can do. And then I have one last kind of shout out um, mention to make here for you, and that's Michelle Garrett. You all know her as Bendy Stitchy. Um, I had posted on one of her Facebook videos. She showed a Cricut collection. Um, cross-stitch piece that she was working on called the Skeleton Crew. And she had started the Skeleton Crew. Um, this is by the Cricut Collection. The Skeleton Crew. You guys have probably seen me stitching on this too. Um, and she had mentioned that um, you know, she had this... Oh, my pattern. Did my pattern just fall apart? Oh no. Okay, no, I see what it is. All right, cool. But uh, <coughs> she had mentioned that, you know, um, she was she was starting work on that. So I put a comment on her video that I had I was also working on um, a skeleton crew. And she commented on my comment that she would actually kind of like to do a stitch along with me. I think that would be really good. Um, Michelle, if you're watching, or if somebody is watching that knows Michelle and can let her know, um, I would really like to do a stitch along with you on the Skeleton Crew, and if anybody else is out there doing this, we could certainly do a stitch along. I'm just not sure when I can join you guys. I've started this already, but um, and I'm making some changes to some of the um, some of the floss and also the the fabric on this. Um, I'm not sure when I'll be able to actually start the stitch along with you, so maybe we could plan it for like, you know, a fall stitch along or something, you know, closer to November, to October. Um, but I would really be interested in that. So if Michelle, Bendy, St Michelle Garrett, Bendy Stitchy, if you're listening or if you watch this or if somebody out there can let her know and wants to join along with us, I think it would be kind of fun to do a skeleton crew stitch along. So it's going to be the Cricut Collection Skeleton Crew Stitch Along, C-C-S-C-S-A-L. <laughs> That's kind of funny. But anyway, so hopefully we can kind of get in touch and um, talk about that. So those are pretty much all the um, shout-outs and mentions that I really want to give today. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I've been working on. I haven't been working on too many projects, haven't started new projects, haven't really been working on any Mill Hill kits for Mill Hill Monday. Haven't I haven't done anything really for Friday Off the Grid. Um, I haven't done any new starts. I wanted to start the um, Fireside Original Seahorse of the Month. I wanted to start that um, this last month in June. But uh, I didn't get around to it. Um, I kind of lost my stitchy bug there for a little bit. And then... Um, so, a couple weekends ago, the, one of the last videos that I did, I was actually working on a mid Amish life. And if you remember, the mid Amish life is that three piece um, Amish pattern that was published in three issues of Cross Stitch and Country Crafts magazine. Here's the first section that I'm working on. Um, sorry about the glare. Um, so you can see the three panels at the top. So I'm working on this panel right here. 
and I actually did manage to get all the clouds done. I got my my objective complete um, fairly recently on this, so I can show you that. You love my project bags? These are just large Ziploc bags, jumbo Ziploc bags. I need to get some more. I don't really have any like of the handmade project bags. Um, because I'm not sure what to order, because I have, I have um, my projects on many different sizes of Q-snaps and many different variations. Um, but anyway, so here's my progress on a mid Amish life. And you can see the happy clouds. I have happy clouds. And I have a big happy tree. So like this open area that's right here, that's the house. That's part of the house. So my next goal on this was to work down the side here and finish up some of the, um, like the background, there's more trees and like a little entry area. And then down here are quilts that are hanging on a clothesline. My goal was to get, work down the side here and get to the quilts and work on a couple of the quilts. And then what I'm going to do is work on the house and just pull the house all the way across because this, uh, this section of the piece um, this section of the piece, you can see I'm actually not that far from the edge of this piece before it moves on to the middle. And I'm going to do it all on one, one big piece and scrunch it all together. So the, the roof of the house here is just going to keep extending all the way out here. So once I get, once I get down here and get some of the background and work on one of the quilts, you can see the quilt there with the lady standing next to it but I'm gonna work on the quilt that's below the trees and stuff and hopefully then I can I can work across this way um, for those of you new this is being worked on 32 count Mercedes Lugana fabric from picture this plus I am doing two over two But this is 32 count Mercedes Lugana from Picture This Plus. And it's kind of a, a modeled a modeled blue. So it looks like sky. That's kind of why I picked it. So the sky is open. Most of the rest of this is full coverage, but um, the sky is going to be visible. So I just thought that would be really pretty. But anyway, that's where I am. I hope you like it. There's my back. Just in case anybody wants to see my back. It's pretty clean, actually. So there's a mid-Amish life. <coughs> Some of you may know that, um, don't mind me while I crinkle, put this away. Um, Some of you may know there's a bunch of people out there that stitch uh, full coverage patterns by a, company, a charting company called Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, I'm one of those people. I like having an earth design patterns. I have quite a few of them in my collection. And I had started the very first one I bought a few years back. I had started a few years back. And it has been on the back burner for a little while. Um, there's this person who is very involved in, um, I believe she's involved in Stitch Mania. She's involved in the Heaven and Earth Designs um, Facebook group. And she has her own thing called Stitch Talk, where she used to talk about fitness and cross-stitching. And it's mainly kind of moved over to just talking about stitching. Her name is Portia Parcher, and it's P-O-R-S-C-H-E. P-A-R-C-H-E-R, -E Portia Parcher. She has this um, Facebook group called Stitch Talk. And she, in coordination with Heaven and Earth Designs, she creates these challenges that last for quite a few months. And the most recent challenge that just ended at the end of June was the 60 Days of Heaven and Earth Design. It's where you stitch on a Heaven and Earth Design pattern for or patterns however you wanted to do it for 60 days straight and you must put in one one stitch a day well she just started a new um, challenge called the hundred days of heaven and art designs 
So you have to limit it to up to four patterns. And your, the goal is to stitch at least one stitch every day for the next 100 days on this one Heaven and Earth Design pattern or however many, four, up to four that you, you choose. Um, I think she's only she's only saying one, two, and four. She's not saying three, uh, just because it's kind of hard to break a hundred days up by three. But um, so you can choose one, two, or four patterns. I have quite a few patterns started, um, just because that's the way I am. I'm kind of a um, what is it? A serial starter, and uh, I have water to drink. Bear with me a minute. I gotta take a sip. But, um, she, so the 100 Days of Heaven and Earth Design Challenge technically started, day zero was Sunday, last week, and we had to, you know, register our email and post a day zero picture, and then stitching actually started Monday, so today is day six, today would be day six, and I have managed to stitch every single day on my Heaven and Earth Design project. The one that I chose, and this is the first Heaven and Earth design pattern that I bought that stuck out with me. This is called Hunter's Moon. The artwork is by Allison Spokes. This was charted back in 2012, so I don't even know. I haven't checked the Heaven and Earth Designs website to see if this is even still available. But this is the pattern that I'm working on. Heaven and Earth Designs, Hunter's Moon by Allison Spokes. It's kind of very reminiscent of like a Mirabilia, like in the dress design and stuff. But what really got me was the owl. And I don't have too many autumn type color pictures that I've stitched. And this one being in like, you know, browns and earth tones kind of just really struck out, stuck out to me. And the moon in the background is just phenomenal. So <laughs> I don't, I can put a uh, day zero pick here for you for the heaven and earth 100 days of heaven and earth designs challenge i'll insert my day zero pick here where i started last sunday okay now I haven't stitched on this yet this morning because I had a workout this morning. So um, I haven't stitched on this yet this morning, but uh, this is my progress as of going to bed last night. So as you can see, I've only done um, the part of the um, the bird in the moon. Um, this is, I'm working on page three. I have page one and two finished now. Um, that was a couple of the finishes that I made. This little bumpy out part down here, this little orange part, that was the, um, the last bit of page one that I had to finish. The last bit of page two is kind of up under here, the bird's wing. So I'm kind of working on completing page three of the pattern. I believe there's 40, 45 pages in this pattern. So I have a lot to go. But you can see, I mean, I've, I've done a lot. But I just haven't worked on this. I am doing this two over one tenth stitch. I believe I told originally said this was 28 count. Mushroom Lugana. I think this was a piece of fabric that I bought at like Michael's or Joann's in the tube that you can get. But I think this is 32 count Lugana. I originally said it was 28. It might be 32. I'm not really sure. But I'm doing it 2 over 1 tenth stitch and it's going pretty fast. So I just put this away because I wanted something else to do and I was kind of getting kind of getting sick of oranges and yellows. There's a lot of orange and yellow in here. And uh, <laughs> there's a lot. I mean, you can see in the moon all the color changes. There's some confetti and stuff in here. But, yeah, this is where I'm going. So this is my 100 days of Heaven and Earth design pattern that I'm working on. Um, 
And that's pretty much all I've been working on is a mid Amish life and the hunter's moon. So, um, you'll probably, the only progress that you're probably going to see from me for a while is, um, hunter's moon. And <coughs> so every 10th day of the challenge, you have to post your video or you have to post a picture of your progress on the Facebook page. And at the end of the hundred days, if you stitch the entire hundred days and you post, you do your posts like you're supposed to, um, you get entered in raffle for some prizes. I'm not necessarily doing it for the prizes. I'm just doing it to get progress made on this piece because it's huge. I mean, you can see, like, I have my fabric here. This is all my fabric. It's all rolled up. But you can see, like, the grids. I'm like, that's only, this gridding here is only half of the pack down here where my finger is. That's only half of the pattern, you guys. That's only half of the pattern. So, I mean, this thing is huge. So, that is, um, that is my thing. I was using the panda, the crying, you can see my back. This is what my back looks like. And I'm parking. So, you can see these extra threads here. I'm parking on this one. I had originally started this not parking because I hadn't done parking before um, when I first started this piece. But I'm doing it on a couple other pieces, and I find it it goes a little faster for me when I park. So, um, but anyway, my needle minder here is one of the ones I got at my game convention that I went to in June. It's a little crying panda. Um, for some reason, the magnet that I put on the back of it, I don't know if it, the material of the pin isn't right, but the, it's not very magnetic. It doesn't hold the, the needles very well. So I might have to get a stronger magnet to put on the back of it. I'm just not really sure. So instead I'm using the backer one. So yeah, that way I don't see myself crying when I'm working on this. So there is Hunter's Moon. And just so you know, here is the 100 Days of Hade challenge. You know, you post every day on the 10th day. And she gives she gives you little more motivational things to go along. Um, I just put this in the um, bag with my pattern. I have one in my planner that I'm actually um, stitching on. I use um, Easy PDF. I have my tablet, and I'm using Easy PDF on my tablet for the pattern. It's a digital copy of the pattern. Yes, you can see my give it just a minute to pop up. But you can see maybe a little bit, but anyway. So there's there's the pattern. There's a little bit of the pattern. You're not going to be able to tell like where that is. But I use Easy PDF, um, so I can highlight where I've where I've worked. Um, it's made it really handy to work on this. Um, let me get back in there so it doesn't fall. <coughs> and um, I, I've been doing a lot of that, uh, a lot of Easy PDF um, charting with uh, my Heaven and Earth designs because it just goes by quicker, and I don't have to worry about you know paper and you know trying to make a high trying to have a highlighter with me and a highlighter that works I just use that um, it, it's been working out quite nice um, the only drawback with that is when you purchase the PDF patterns you actually can't sell the patterns once you're done with them because of copyright issues um, so if you're gonna want to sell the pattern your best bet is to buy one of each and then you can sell the pattern I don't know why that that would work but I also I do have a printout of my pattern. This is a, whoops, sorry about that. This is the printout of the pattern. I just took the PDF, printed it out on a color printer, um, at least this page on the color printer, and then I printed the chart, basically, you can see there, the chart on black and white. So I do have a printed copy of the chart, um, but uh, yeah, I use Easy PDF for that. So that's about all I've got. All right. 
so I've got a couple of new things in. We're going to move on to Paul. I've got a couple of new things in. <coughs> Many of you know that Stony Creek Collection does a Pattern of the Month series. They have one that started a new one that started out started in May for called Horrific Halloween. Um, the May one was ingredients, and the June one was Eye of Newt. So I thought this was kind of kind of a neat little series. Um, I ordered July. July hasn't come in yet. Um, July is the witches and ghosts. But uh, anyway, so here's the first pattern. This is Horrific Halloween, May. Ingredients. Ingredients for Horrific Halloween. Then the second one for June, Eye of Newt. I just thought these were really cute. I'm looking forward to getting it. So here's the, here's the entire pattern for you. There you go. This is by Stony Creek. And each pattern of the month is free. So I had to buy buy May. Um, if you buy, if you don't get them during the free period, like July's, July's is free, you'll pay $3.50 shipping for it. Um, but since I didn't buy this until June, I had to pay $3.95 to get the May. So if you haven't yet got this and you want to get it, um, you'll have to pay three ninety five for May and June, plus the shipping. July is free, so you can order them all together and just pay the shipping for July. So um, I'm gonna be. I have this on my calendar to purchase this for August, September, and October. September, October, yeah. So we have that. So this is coming. I'm kind of excited. I don't know if I'll use the called for fabric. Um, I may. I don't know. Um, I'm definitely going to stitch them all like this, though, in one big bell, bell pull. I think that would be kind of fun. And I think you can get that bell pull at Stony Creek. Probably some other places, too, but that's really cute. The bell pull hardware with the ghosts in the cauldron is kind of cute. Um, so, yeah, this is my plan at some point. Um, so, I went to Barnes & Noble on Tuesday night because my, um, my workout Tuesday night was canceled. The, um, the building that the workout facility was in was out of power. So, um, I went to Barnes & Noble and I was digging through some of their cross-stitch magazines and I picked up Ultimate Cross-Stitch Cards. This is the Volume 17 2018 edition. Ultimate cross stitch cards. I thought this was really cute. The thing that struck out to me in this, of course, knowing that I like Japanese stuff. Come on, where are they? Knowing that I like Japanese stuff. Where is it? Oh, there they are. It has these Kokeshi dolls. Kokeshi dolls. I really like Kokeshi dolls. So this is one of the one of the patterns or one of the sets of patterns that really struck out to me was Kokeshi dolls. I really like Kokeshi dolls, you guys. I should show you my Kokeshi doll collection. I have the little Kokeshi dolls. It's really cute, including a Kokeshi Hello Kitty. It's really cute. Um, but there's just some other really cute patterns in here. Um, a lot of these are smaller patterns that you can put on cards. Um, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, but, uh, you know, everybody went to StitchCon, and usually at stitching conventions, they have what are called smalls exchanges, and I don't have, I probably have stuff stashed away somewhere that I could use for smalls exchanges, but I would really actually kind of like to stitch up some stuff for some people. I thought these were really cute, too. These are Cupcake Heaven Cupcakes. So you have Cupcake Heaven, little cupcakes. I thought that would be cute. Um, there's some other stuff. Oh, look at those. Those are so cute. Little Christmas cuties stockings. I'm not going to get into an entire flip through of the book, but these are just some of the things that I thought would be really cute. These trees are cute. They're called Bright as a Button. 
these trees are really cute. And there's some Easter rabbits. And the houses, the houses were cute too. Fun in the Sun beach houses. The Fun in, the Fun in the Sun beach houses were really cute too. So yeah, um, I just figured these would be like really cute um, things to make smalls for. Um, sweet words. These are kind of nice. I think I know who I would probably stitch a couple of those for if I ever had the chance to meet her. Owls and animal crackers and thank yous. Oh, look at those. Those are so cute. Okay, so here's some Halloween stuff. Owl, mouse, cat. Look at these. A hedgehog. These are so cute. Look at those. So yeah. Anyway, so this is cross -stitch, Ultimate Cross Stitch Cards. Small's book. And then I picked up this other magazine. This is Enjoy Cross Stitch Sweet Treats. Comes in this nice little like plastic um, project, kind of vinyl project bag with a zipper, a sliding zipper. Um, because there's a project in here too, and we'll get to that. <coughs> so this is this is some more Small's. This, Smalls that I can do. A lot of them, a lot of it has to do with sweet treats. So, like, um, in here, there's one for, um, I thought this was kind of, well, it doesn't really show you. Um, this is an alphabet using food. You know, like, the, all the letters use food. I think the K is cookies. There's, like, a macaroon and stuff. Um, it's just really, really, really kind of cute. Um, Chocoholic, I can't really show you that because there's no picture of it. But it's all chocolate stuff. There's all kinds of sweet shop things. Sweet treats and gifts galore. All kinds of fun little donuts and stuff to stitch. I just thought those were all just really cute. Um... This one is really neat. This is a strawberries and cream. The picture on it, it's a little kind of blurry, but that's really cute. Um, the Sweet Memories is really cool. It's a bunch of stuff in mason jars. <laughs> if I could figure out a way to change this, I'd probably stitch this fried eggs one. Um, I'd change the liquid in the bottle, or I'd put the liquid in the bottle and make it uh, beet colored because I like pickled eggs, but I like pickled eggs with beets. Loved pickled eggs with beets. Mmm, pickled eggs. But I'm the type of person that loves to leave them in the liquid until the yolks are even turning purple. But yeah, I love pickled eggs. So I'd probably stitch this one and I'd change it from fried eggs to pickled eggs. And then I'd change them, make them purple. Because I just think that would be cool. But I like the jelly bean jar. That's cool. I'm not so big on the shrimps, but there is the all sorts. All sorts are pretty cool. The cola cubes, you know, little fuzzy, fuzzy gummies and jazzies. So yeah, fried eggs. It's probably going to be a pickled egg jar if I do it. And then um, gingerbread men. Little recipe gingerbread men. I thought that was cute. Um, you know, there's just some really cute things in here. Lots of things about food. Um, look at this sweet, a free gift. So this is the free gift. Perfect for birth. So these are the free gift patterns that come with it. So this is the free gift pattern. So I can show you that now. Now this came with um, quite a bit. Of, here's the free gift kit that came with it. So you have your ribbons, cards, ribbons and cards, and then you have 13, 13 skeins of floss, and they're really pretty colors. All of the skeins have eight meters. I'm not sure if any of you out there know, this is from the UK. 
Is anyone out there familiar with maybe what brand of floss this is? The floss in here is really, really kind of nice. Um, I don't know if it's good to stitch with. I haven't actually stitched with any. Come on. It's going to take some out. But the floss is, um, you know, these are actually full skeins. Full skeins. I'll take out a couple. They're full skeins of floss. I don't know. I don't, I'm not familiar with this. Is this Madeira? It doesn't really say. I don't know. Eight meters. I don't know if that says. No. It's soft floss. I just don't know how well it'll hold up. But yeah, so I have 13 skeins of this floss. And I don't know if it's any good. So if any of you out there know anything about the floss, um, let me know. That would be great. I would love to hear and know what I'm, what I'm getting myself into. Whee. Trying to get this a little bit more flat so you can see colors. Colors! Wow, yeah, there's lots of colors in here. But yeah, so, sorry about the pink leaves. But it comes with a kit. It even comes with the fabric. This is the fabric. It comes with Ada. But you get 18 or 13 skeins of floss, and they're really pretty colors. So, <laughs> and then there's this large pullout chart, too. This pullout chart is really cute. This is What a Scoop. If you're into the hedgehog patterns, these are kind of go along with that. This is the pullout pattern that you get for free, too. This is really cute. Hedgehogs. I love it. What a scoop. All right, so that's, that's new stuff that I got. Um, so one of the other things I get that's not stitching related, um, there's this thing called loot crate that comes out, I think once a month and it's for like geeky people, you know, like nerd, nerdy kind of stuff. And they have, um, they have crates and boxes and stuff that you can get every month. And it's like a subscription, so every month you get this box of random stuff. Um, there's all kinds of subscription boxes that you can get that are out there. Um, one of the ones that I get is this Japanese stationery box called Zen Pop, and it's from zenpop.jp, and it's this little stationery box. I haven't gotten it in a little while, but I got one um, for the month of June. It finally just got here at the end of the month. So. This is the little box that comes in. It look, kind of looks like a little pizza box. Zenpop.jp. Um, so it's a stationery pack. And this is the little flyer that comes in it. And this is all the stuff you get. Um, little notepads, books, um, markers, washi tape, this little stamp that came in this one. So this is, my, this is one of the things I got. I'm not going to show you everything um, because I've kind of taking some of this out but like here's a little panda stationery set that I got it's really cute um, stickers origami paper little bunny shaped gift bag type things treat bags um, thank you washi tape this is what came in this one thank you it says thank you washi tape there's a couple of pens and old pens in here and stuff like that. It's just random stuff that you get um, from Japan, J Japanese stationery, every month. And it's just really kind of cool, you know, like little note, little notepads and stickers. And I got a Samiko Garashi little stamp. It's a little stamp. So, it's just really kind of cool. This is one of the exciting things I get. Um, because I got into um, fountain pens and wanting to write and writing letters and stuff like that. Um, <coughs> I was really hoping to have a couple of pen pals, like regular pen pals, going right now, but it just hasn't really happened. Um, I had a couple set up and we just kind of stopped stopped writing. But um, I kind of got the stationery kit because it was a way for me to get some of the cool pens from Japan that I really wanted. I'm into fountain pens, and there's this company called Preppy 
that makes fountain pens, um, you know, where you use the ink cartridges. And I really like writing with fountain pens. So um, I had signed up for the stationery pack a couple of times, and I'm getting another one for month of July. It's going gonna, it's gonna to ship. It usually takes about a month to get here. So I'll get it at the end of the month. And I can show you that, but it's it's kind of a cool little stationery kit, and I really I'm really enjoying getting them, you know, because you get little goofy things like that. <coughs> all right, so that's pretty much all I've gotten for you. Oh, one of the things that I've been working on, um, one of the reasons why I hadn't been stitching a lot is because I had made a um, baby, I crocheted a baby outfit for. Um, I guess she'd be our niece who's having a baby who's staying at Dylan's dad's house um, to help him. Um, she's having a baby in August and she had found a pattern for a Legend of Zelda Link outfit for her baby that she wanted crocheted and so she sent me the pattern and I crocheted it for her. Her baby shower was last Sunday and um, I found fleece for Legend of Zelda Link um, it was like a stained glass kind of pattern, so I bought her some fabric of that, and I stripped, I cut strips in the edges of the of the blanket, and tied the strips together. So I gave her the blanket and the crocheted outfit last weekend for her baby shower. So I can put in, um, I'll put a picture of them here. So that was one of the other things I've been working on that has been taking time away from stitching. Um, but I finally got that all done last Saturday um, within a couple of hours, you know, while sitting at the dining room table at my father-in-law's house, hoping that Megan didn't come into the room because <laughs> she didn't know I was doing the blanket for her. But anyway, so she really liked that. That was one of the things I've been working on. All right. So, the next next kind of topic I wanted to talk about was hashtag challenges. So these are like some of the things I've been working on. So I already mentioned the 100 Days of Hade, 100 Days of Heaven and Earth Designs. It's hashtag 100 Days of H-A-E-D. And I've obviously been working on Hunter's Moon. You guys have seen that. So, somebody had posted on or had shared on Stitch Mania that they were also um, working on something for Full Coverage Fanatics Facebook group called the July Challenge. And I was like, well, wait a minute. I think Full Coverage Fanatics is one of the Facebook groups that I'm in. So I went over to Full Coverage Fanatics and I was looking at their events or their challenges, their hashtags or stitch alongs, whatever they call them. And I was like, ah, oh. <laughs> The July 2018 full coverage finale, full coverage fanatic stitch, stitch along is putting 1,200 stitches on one project. Well, I'm working on the 100 Days of Hade, so obviously I'm going to be working on this too. So I'm also doing the July 2018 full coverage fanatics 1,200 stitches on one project thing. I'm going to have to look up what that is technically called because I think there's a name for it on the Full Coverage Fanatics Facebook group but um, I can't off the top of my head think of what it is. So on Stitch Mania there are also several hashtag stitch alongs that are going on. Um, one of them is full coverage on the 5th. So every month on the 5th of the month you work on a full coverage project. Well obviously I'm doing Heaven and Earth Designs Obviously, on the 5th, I stitched on Hunter's Moon, which is full coverage. So I actually participated in full coverage on the 5th. Um, <coughs> let's see. I believe it's the third Friday of the month. It might be the second Friday of the month. But if you remember last month, Kitten Stitcher, um, Stitchy, who does, who calls her floss tube Stitchy Tube, she has a really cute uh, jingle that goes along with her thing. She decided um, at the beginning of June that she wanted to have a sleepover. She goes, adults don't have sleepovers. You know, we, d we just don't do it anymore. And she was trying to 
revitalize the whole sleepover thing, you know, where people just kind of gather together online, and we all know that we're all sleeping over and stitching, and it was kind of a lot of fun. And I actually participated um, once we finally got down to my father-in-law's house. I think I was up until about 3 in the morning, just kind of stitching along. And um, that's coming up. I don't think it's this coming weekend. I think it's the weekend after. I might be wrong about that, but I don't remember if it's the second Friday or the third Friday of the month. So we have cross-stitch sleepover coming o coming up. Um, there's also Friday off the grid, where from 6 to midnight, whatever time zone you happen to be in, you can sit down and stitch and know that you're stitching with a bunch of other people. It's called Friday off the grid. And um, there's a YouTube channel for it and a Facebook group for it as well. But every Friday, you know, the, the lady that kind of got it started, um, she publishes a YouTube video for Friday Off the Grid and stitches for about 30 to 45 minutes. And then she just knows that every, it's kind of like a Friday night stitch along, you know, Friday night lady stitch along or just stitch along in general. But it's called Friday Off the Grid. Um, so technically, since I stitched some on Friday night, I participated in that. I didn't really post that I was participating in it. This is all stuff that you can post that you're participating. So there's that. And she also does, on the last Sunday of every month, she does what's called Sunday high tea. So Sunday morning, she gets up and she records a Flash 2 video of the piece that she's going to start for Sunday high tea. Because she she starts one project a month. <sighs> she likes to start one project a month. So this is her way of starting it. She calls it Sunday High Tea, and she usually posts the video sometime early on Sunday. So that's coming up. It's the last Sunday of the month. So those are the main hashtags that I kind of been I've kind of been following. You have the Hundred Days of Hade, the Full Coverage Fanatics, um, July twenty eighteen uh, challenge or hashtag. Um, I'll post I'll post the information also down at the bottom when I'm done with this, but. You stitch 1,200 stitches on one project, which kind of coincides with the 100 days of Hade and the full coverage on the 5th. So you have full coverage on the 5th, which is the 5th of every month. The cross-stitch sleepover, which is, I think, the third Friday of the month. It might be the second. I'll post the information down below as well. You have Friday off the grid. Um, you stitch. It's a kind of a stitch along every Friday night. Um, Sunday high tea, which is a new start on the last Sunday of the month, and um, there's some other ones, like oh goodness, like uh, Bewitch Stitches Facebook group has one called the Dark Thirteen Stitch Along, which is on the thirteenth of the month you stitch on something kind of dark or Halloween or spooky or something to that effect. So it could be witch related. Halloween related, pumpkins, you know, that kind of thing. Um, that's Dark 13 Stitch Along. Um, and there's a couple others. So, future plans. Alright. I won't get into future plans just yet. Um, I just kind of want to go over a couple of the a couple of the things I, I've already mentioned. So, a couple of the Facebook groups that I've been kind of involved in um, that I'm kind of renewing my involvement in is uh, Full Coverage Fanatics, obviously. Um, you know, they have a bunch of new challenges and stitch alongs. I'll try and post a link to the stitch alongs that they have down below. Um, there's Stitch Mania. You all, a lot of you know about Stitch Mania and all the stitch alongs going on with that. I'll post a link to their events down below. Um, Bewitch Stitches is another Facebook group I belong to. Um, they're kind of nice. They do the Dark 13 stitch along. Um, I'll post a link to some of their stitch alongs. And then, of course, Stitch Talk, which is the 100 Days of Hade Challenge um, group. Um, so that's pretty much all I'm getting into. One of my cross stitch store friends who works at the cross, uh, my local needle workshop, Cross My Heart, um, <coughs> they had posted a uh, bingo, like a July bingo free stitch along. And she posted her initial free sp free space start right in the middle. And so I was asking her about it. So there's this group called Stitcher's Village. 
and it's a Facebook group and also kind of like a news group forum type of place. And they have this um, stitch along going on for July called Bing Mystery Bingo. And so every couple of days, a little square on your bingo card is filled out. You know, the first column is B I N G O. Of course, the free space that came out is in the middle of the end row. So um, they give you the dimensions of the fabric and everything, and it's really cute. Um, I haven't printed it out yet. I don't have it. I don't think. Oh, actually, yes, I do. So this, um, the Stitcher's Village, here's the first page of the newsletter. Just to show you, the Stitcher's, that's called the Stitcher's Voice. The newsletter is the Stitcher's Voice. But it's the Stitcher's Village, and there's like a news group, everything like that. So their newsletter talks about their mystery stitch bingo. And there's your bingo card. But it talks about the mystery stitch bingo. So here is the guidelines for the mystery stitch bingo. Again, with the with the bingo grid. Mystery stitch bingo. And then they give you the free space pattern. I know this is free, but I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. So day one is the free space. I'm not going to show you the pattern. I haven't stitched it yet. I don't know when I will stitch it. I just kind of want to see the pattern. Day one is the free space. So yeah. It's kind of cool. So the recommended floss is Sulky Cotton, Petites, or DMC. Um, you can obviously swap out any colors you want, but um, the free space is really cute. Um, so what you're looking at is the pattern for free. Um, but that, that should be kind of fun. I don't know if I'm going to keep up with it. I don't know how far I'm going to stitch on it. Um, but their newsletter also gives you a um, another free pattern. There's another free pattern listed or in the newsletter. You can see there. Another free pattern in the newsletter. It's really kind of neat. So that's another group that I kind of just, just got involved with called the Stitcher's Village. Um, much like everything in my life, I <laughs> I get stretched out and stretched a little too thin. So I may be talking more about the Stitcher's Village going forward. So if you're interested, I'm, I'll put the information down below for the Stitcher's Village forums and the Facebook group. Um, you can go into the forums. It'll tell you in the newsletter. It'll tell you how to get there. Yeah, it's in the community section of the Stitcher's Village. It's password protected area of the site. You have to go register for for it to sign up. But the Stitcher's Village, that's something new that I got into. So we have Full Coverage Fanatic, Stitch Mania, Bewitch Stitches, Stitch Talk, and Stitcher's Village. Those are the places that I'm kind of most active in now, right now that are um, uh, stitching related. So uh, last but not least, God, this is about an hour. I didn't think this was going to be this long. All right, so future plans. So I was watching Pam and Steph's StitchCon wrap-up video, and I was just kind of talking to my my husband about, you know, it'd be kind of nice to go to go to a fly, a stitching retreat and just stitch for the weekend and just have fun. And he's like, well. You could have gone to StitchCon, and I was like, no, I couldn't have gone to StitchCon, because StitchCon is full. In fact, StitchCon next, next year is full. I'm on the waiting list, but it's already full, and I didn't make the cut. Well, I might, but I haven't made the cut yet. Well, my local cross-stitch store, Cross My Heart, here in Columbus, Ohio, every year around end of October, early November, they hold what's called Camp Gotta Stitch. And it's usually kind of up a little farther north of Columbus in Amish country. And this year's Camp Got a Stitch is November 9th, 10th, and 11th. And it's in Berlin, Ohio at the Berlin Grand, Day, Berlin Grand Hotel. Grand has an E at the end of it in Berlin, Ohio. So I kind of half mentioned it to Dylan that, you know, I've really, I'd really like to go to one of these. And he's like, well, you've talked about 
the Cross My Heart one for a couple of years. Yes, because they've been doing it for like 21 years. Um, he goes, how much is it? So I told him the cost, and he goes, well, that's not too bad. That includes your lodging and food. Since that includes your lodging and food, why don't you just go for it? <laughs> so, in, in light of, in spite of everything going on this year, um, work-wise and family-wise and everything like that, I'm going to go register for Camp Goddess Stitch, you guys. It's going to happen this year. I'm kind of excited. I'm just really excited. that um, The deposit is $50. I will put information for um, the Camp Got a Stitch and the um, event page down below as well. But I'm actually really excited. I might actually be going to my first stitching convention. Yay! Sorry. I didn't mean to get all excited. Sorry, not sorry. Yes, I did mean to get all excited. So I'm actually kind of excited. I haven't, I haven't paid. I haven't submitted my deposit yet. But my plan is to go to Camp Goddess Stitch in November, November 9th through 11th in Berlin, Ohio. So, <laughs> if any of you out there are going, I'd really love to see you. Um, one of the things that's really kind of cool is Pam and Steph from Just Keep Stitching have expressed interest in wanting to go wanting to go to Camp Goddess Stitch. So that would be exciting to meet Pam and Steph from Just Keep Stitching from Cincinnati, Ohio. That would be really cool. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be rooming with somebody or if I'm going to pay extra to room by myself, but uh, we shall see. Probably just be kind of fun to room with somebody. I have no no problems with that. Um, but yeah, I get to go to Camp Goddess Stitch this year. My husband even said, go ahead. The really nice thing is, too, is you can actually um, you know make payments as you go. Of course, the balance is due before the before the retreat happens but I'm going to Camp Goddess Stitch this year that is my goal I'm so excited um, it'll be kinda of fun cuz I'm not I haven't been to a all stitching retreat before um, so yeah that'll be kinda of fun so that's that's all I've got for you so I have a lot of stuff to link and save for you um, other than that not much else is going on I'm just really excited. I'm looking forward to all the things coming up this year. And we're going on almost an hour. Wow. That's pretty cool. Anyway, so that's about all I got for you guys. Um, I will kind of leave it here. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. I don't know if I'll be getting another video posted in another week or two or not. But uh, anyway, that's all I got for you. So buy all the things. Stitch all the things. 100 Days of Heaven and Earth Designs, you guys. Uh. Anyway, so, that's what I'm doing. You've seen it all. Well, you've seen all I can show you. Anyway, so, take care. I hope you guys are staying cool out of this hot and humid weather. Um, I hope you guys are stitching all the things. hope you guys are enjoying the summer, if you have summer off. I hope everything's going well. Um, things are going okay here. But anyway, so keep on keeping on, and uh, take care until next time. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.